I love books. I really do. I even got my favorite one here today, the book of Struvelpeter. Please raise your hand. Who knows this book? <laughs> wow, that's a lot. I don't know about you, but this book has a sentimental value to me because it reminds me of my childhood. My parents used to read it with me. And if you ask my parents, this book was less a parental warning for me than an inspiration. I really liked the story and the tale about Flying Robert because this was the guy who was blown away by the wind because he was playing outside in stormy weather with an umbrella. I tried it a few times because I wanted to fly as him. It never quite worked, actually. Today, I want to ask two questions, two simple questions that led to my life-changing experience. From a book collector and book lover to a digital nomad. Because living paperless means freedom. So the first question is why? Why did I become paperless? Three years ago, I owned around 800 books. I really liked my books. I love them. I have a special connection to my books because nearly everything I know, I know from books. They've been my teachers my whole life. Everything I know about history, my philosophy, even my understanding in science, I know from books. I remember my first job as a caretaker. I was cutting the lawn and I was watering the flowers and stuff. And for my first salary, I bought the complete volume of the Feynman lectures on physics. It meant the world to me because I'm a nerd. And yet now I have only 17 printed books and read all my stuff completely digital. Even if I said a few years ago, I will never, ever read on a tablet. But three years ago, I felt stuck in life. I didn't feel any good at that time because I felt stuck with my studies in physics. I felt stuck with building my startup and I felt bound to my flat in Nuremberg. I had a feeling that I need to go out of my comfort zone, that I work further on my new company. I wanted to move to Berlin, but I couldn't. I had a lot of books and magazines and scripts, but I had little to no money in my bank account. I asked a very good friend, Chris, for advice, and he asked me the fundamental question. He asked, why? Why do you keep all those books? And I had the feeling that he didn't understand my situation, but actually he understood it way better than I did. He asked, why? I know you spend a lot of money and time collecting these rare editions and all your books, but you're not happy with them, nor are you free. And within an instance, it just made click, and I knew what to do. And now I read all my documents, I read all my books on a tablet. Even if I said three years ago, I would never do this. Because living paperless means freedom. You know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And I went in this situation, I would have never thought about becoming paperless. So today, I want to be your good friend and ask you the question. Why aren't you living paperless yet? You heard about my challenge, but what is yours? Why aren't you living paperless yet? And I want to give you the next 10 seconds to think about your challenge. Why aren't you living paperless? So I can imagine maybe one of the reasons why aren't you living paperless is that paper gives you a certain feeling of security. You have all your documents and even if your computer breaks down, you have all your stuff. 
Or maybe you say, like me, you like the tactile feeling of a book and the scent of a new printed book. Or maybe you say you're just used to it, and that's the reason why you want to keep it. Have this reason, your challenge, in the back of your mind. We come to that later. But now I want to ask you the second question. And the second question is what? What does my life look like now that I'm living completely paperless? And what could society look like if everyone does? Well, my journey began at my desktop, at my little paper corner. I have a normal desktop, and sometimes it was more chaotic, like this one, and sometimes it was super clean, at least to my standards, so please don't call my mom. And I started scanning all my documents. I was giving away all my books. I was do donating them, I was selling them, I was giving them to good friends and became completely paperless. And after a few weekends, I came to my last pile. My last pile. And from this point on, I had a completely different life. And actually, when you ask family and friends, and I were telling them about that I'm living paperless right now, they s thought it would look something like this. Emma. 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 Yeah, maybe I was annoying as this guy was, but a friend of mine told me a few weeks ago that there are Japanese toilets who work completely paperless. How crazy is that? <laughs> so the question is, what is in it for me? So what does my life look like now that I'm living paperless? Well, the first thing is I don't do searching anymore. I find everything within seconds. Because there's no question where I have my documents, if they are lying on my desk, if I have them in the drawer, if I have them in my... I don't know. It's never a question because all my life is in a cloud, encrypted, and I can access it instantly with every device. Could be my laptop, but it could be also yours. I could use your phone and I could use your tablet. And that's really something that gives me freedom. Because living paperless means freedom. And my life is shrinked down right now. I have a size zero household, so I were not just giving away all my books, I were giving away everything I have. So now I have the freedom to work wherever I want. At first, it was on my desktop, who looked super clean all the time, because I don't have paper to mess it up. But to be honest, I don't have a desk anymore. I'm 100% mobile. I have no set of domicile, but maybe that's another TED talk. Now my desk is maybe a coffee shop in Berlin. This photo is one week old. I was finishing my TED talk. At the end of the year, this will be my desk. I was sailing th through South East Asia on a catamaran and we'll be working there. And, and this is the third thing, living paperless gives you a free mind. And this is a true relief because now everything has a reminder. If a meeting comes up, I have a reminder. If a document, a contract is due, I have a reminder and the document says I had to take action in one way or the other. And this gives me a really freedom because if I don't have a reminder, it does not exist in my world. And that's really freedom to me. So this is my journey how I became paperless, my challenge. And while I was on this journey, I found some really interesting stuff, some real cool and crazy facts about our society and the way we work with paper. I'd like to share those facts with you. So when you think about living paperless, one day or the other, you run into environmental issues. And this was the number I've read in an article. 
Greenpeace says that we use 250 kilogram of paper, every one of us. Private use, not company. Of course, this is not just your paper you print out, it's also the toilet paper you're using, the tissue and all that stuff. But how crazy is that? And really interesting about that fact, it's not that it's four times the weight of your grandmother. The really interesting fact is that this number increased eight times in the last 50 years. So why? We become more and more digital. Why do we need more and more paper? Well, one reason is that we have access now to free tutorials, to wikis, and to ebooks, and people print it out. I did it myself. A few years ago, I printed out a 750 page tutorial how to program an operating system from scratch and program it page by page. So maybe this is one of the reasons. But to be honest, this number is huge when you think of paper, but it's even larger when you think that paper is not a raw material. We need our best resources to produce paper. So on a daily basis, every one of us in this room need 37 liters of water to produce the amount of paper we need. And not just that, we need around 8 kilowatt hours, which is around 5 hours running your microwave, for the amount of paper you need, and 2 kilogram of wood. And that's actually 40% of all the wood in the world we need to produce paper. That's two out of five. And really crazy about this number is that a lot of that we just throw away without ever reading. And of course, this starts in the company because companies have a huge need for paper. And I read this statistic from 2012 that every third employee prints his email before reading. If the company culture would change, a company could save up to 3% of company revenue. In case of Apple Incorporated, that would mean 5.5 billion in a year. So this is the environmental aspect, but to be honest, this was not the reason, reason why I became paperless. I'm much more interested in the bigger scale. So today is the day of the Exponential Change Conference, and I'm sure we hear a lot of really interesting talks about how our society will develop and what challenges we will face in the future. But I strongly believe that the first step to this new future is becoming paperless, because we are on the edge to a new era. It was quite fun being actually in the era of paper, but it's over. We are maybe the last generation who use paper the way we do it right now. Your children and your grandchildren will have a totally new approach to it when they even use it. So it's always hard, actually, being on the edge of something. Ask the guys who wrote on stone. Ask the guys who wrote on papyrus or leather. It's always hard to change the way we used to do something. But I think it's time to get fully digital, because living paperless means freedom. So think back to your 10 seconds. Think back to your biggest challenge. And maybe today is the day where you get the first little step into a new future. Maybe you're not printing all your emails. Or maybe you give away all your books like I did and keep only a few of them with the highest sentimental value to you. Or maybe you read your newsletter, only digital, only online. Think about what could be your next step into the future. And my last question for you is, are you ready for the next step? Thank you.